Hey guys, Leafy here, back with another Albin Online video. This time I'll help you become more efficient and successful with clearing solo dungeons by sharing some tips and advice with you. Some of these tips will even increase the amount of silver you will make drastically. If you are completely new to Albion and need help getting into solo dungeons or help with builds, you can check out my beginner guides which I will link in the description below. Let's start off with talking about the difficult fights you might encounter within solo dungeons, such as epic and sometimes even legendary bosses. We often use solo dungeon builds that make for fast clearing, and we don't really consider that very small chance of running into certain bosses that are ready to wipe the floor with us. You just might be lucky and get a legendary side boss or even a legendary boss at the end of your dungeon, but not always be in the proper build to take these bosses on. And it would be a waste to not succeed in killing them since they provide enormous fame and rewards. So what can you do to ensure you have a standing chance to kill them and walk out with the loot that awaits you? You can bring certain items with you that make these encounters easier. Now you can go and farm with whatever build you want. And all I suggest is that you take one or some of the following items with you. First up, I think it's always a good idea to bring some healing potions with you, no matter what build you play. Just having a couple of them in your inventory, in case you need that extra sustain, will cost you almost nothing. And just in case you're a very new player, as your standard, you want to have a stack of tier 4 poison potions to speed things up. If your go-to food is health regen, it won't do anything for you during these difficult fights. So you might want to bring along food that actually helps you with difficult boss fights as well. This could be beef stew for more damage or pork omelette for lower cooldowns. Another thing you can do, which I highly recommend, is have equipment swaps with you that provide sustain. This could be a mercenary jacket, which I personally like a lot, a guardian helmet, a cultist robe or even a one-handed axe together with a mist color if you are using my great axe build to farm solo dungeons. Simply replace your current equipment with one of these items to get some sustain for the more difficult boss fights. Next up, let's talk about your choice of food. Throughout the dungeon, you typically use food with health regen, which makes it possible to jump from pack to pack without having to wait a single second. For this, you often use something like the cabbage soup or dangle mouth catfish. Or if you are rich because you follow my money making guides, you might even be using the Avalonian Beast too, which aside from providing health regen, also increases your damage as a nice bonus. This makes for faster clearing, which means more dungeons per hour, which in turn means you will get more fame and item drops. Now the Avalonian Beast 2 is pretty expensive compared to the soup and catfish, but don't forget that clearing a single floor extra will return the value in fame alone. Therefore, if you wish to take your dungeon clearing to the next level, I suggest you look into the Avalonian Beast 2 to see what it can do for you. Now it might be possible that you need the difference in health regen and therefore are better off with the super catfish. But if you are fine with less health regen and see value in faster clearing, you should definitely consider the Avalonian Beast 2. Whilst we are on the topic of food, I also need to warn you that if you are using food with health regen, which is the go-to food for dungeon clearing, there is a chance that you are going about it wrong. You might have plenty sustain within your build already, which means you don't even need the health regen feature from these foods. This could be when you have something like a mercenary jacket or cultist rope in your build. What we often do when we use equipment with sustain in our builds is hold on to them until we desperately need them, such as with the more difficult boss fights. However, if you get into the habit of using your sustain skills throughout the dungeon as well, you could easily replace your health regen food with an offensive or utility food. This once again could be something like the beast 2 for extra damage or pork omelette for faster cooldowns. Utilizing your skills and food choice means you will be clearing the dungeon much faster and make more profit and progress. Next up, I want to talk about the lock mechanic. In blue and yellow zones, dungeons close 60 seconds after the last person enters, and this timer is 90 seconds for red and black zones. Although this did remove the PvP potential of solo dungeons, it made them far safer for players to farm. Now what players typically do is enter the dungeon and wait out the timer at the entrance to make sure they can't get dived, which is the wise thing to do. But if you are going to do this anyway, why not take the best PvE build possible with you? I still see a lot of people farm in inefficient or even complete PvP builds whilst this feature is a thing. 
that being said i will be making some efficient pve builds very shortly so keep an eye out for those in fact let me know what builds or weapons you would like to see covered in the comments below now although the lock mechanic keeps you safe inside you still might get ganked on your way to the dungeon or on your way back in such a scenario the pve set will drag you down what you can do to have the best survivability possible is bring along some escape items or an escape set with you. For this you are looking at high mobility and defense items such as demon boots, the double bladed staff and the soldier helmet. You don't need anything crazy such as high tier or expensive items. A low tier demon boot will do much more for you than a high tier leather shoe will when your goal is to escape. My next step is for those that do solo dungeons in the royal continent which is to faction flag whenever you decide to farm. If you aren't doing this already, you are missing out on so much additional silver. With the lock mechanic in place, it's almost free money. Sure, you add some additional risk to your gameplay if you want to farm safely in yellow zones, but the risk versus reward is very little risk for a lot of rewards. Doing this can add up to millions a day you will be making extra if you just faction flag. Once you are done with your final dungeon, simply unflag and safely head back to town. One thing I'm very guilty of is not optimizing the skills I have available to me. I will often not use my armor skill for example, because I feel like I need to save it for a more important mob pack. What ends up happening, because I think like that, is that I maybe use my armor skill a total of one or two times throughout the entire dungeon. Don't be like me, I mean even I'm trying to be less like me on this aspect and optimize all the skills you have available to you by using them as much as possible. Cooldowns are just that, they will come back up sooner than later and not using your skills when they are off cooldown will actually slow you down a lot. And if you notice you are not using certain skills at all, or very little, perhaps replace that part of your build by something that will speed things up or help you out in one way or another. What I personally do nowadays is use the mercenary jacket instead of the stalker jacket because I noticed I almost never used it. And it's nice to have the sustain from the mercenary jacket in my main build already for the more difficult fights and it also makes it possible to rely less on health regen foods. That being said, another way to optimize the skills you have available to you is by changing them when necessary. If you fight an epic or legendary boss and have difficulties, you might want to check what you can swap around to have a better chance in that fight. This will often be changing AoE skills to single target skills and sometimes even changing your passives. Finally, I want to notify any beginners watching this video about the Reaver level. This is something that's overlooked very easily and makes for a lot of confusion in newer players. If you open your destiny board and look to the left, you will find the various Reaver levels. As you can see, these will provide offensive and defensive stats for higher tier content as you unlock them. A lot of new players ask me why they take a lot of damage or don't do any damage to higher tier monsters and 10 out of 10 times it's because they don't have the proper reaver level unlocked. Now I hope you enjoyed this video enough to give it a thumbs up and if you have any tips of your own, make sure to share them in the comments below. If you want to be notified of new Albion Online videos that will help you become a better player, feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell. As always, I wish you good luck in your adventures and I'll see you next time.